Hello and welcome back to Project Ozone 3. Now, I'm just doing a quick update video because it's been brought to my attention recently that my previous tutorial on how to set up an early game auto save and resource generator is a little bit off. Now, with the recent updates to Project Ozone, I haven't played this in a fair while, uh, the recent updates have got rid of the transfer nodes and item nodes and the transfer pipes. Now, these were really effective and efficient ways of getting this auto generator set up. But a few people have been having problems rebuilding and resetting everything up. So I thought I'd just do a quick five minute tutorial on a quick uh, way around the uh, the transfer pipe. So we can um, we can still have this early game auto save to set up. And it's incredibly powerful, incredibly useful. But you can use other pipes that are involved in the game itself. So what you're going to need is some heat sand or lava. Just some sort of heat source like we did in the previous video. You're going to need some a pulverizer. You're going to need a bit of leadstone flux duct, which is incredibly easy to make. I will just show you the recipe for that. So the leadstone flux duct is insanely easy. Bit of glass, bit of redstone, bit of lead. No problems whatsoever. You're going to need a water wheel, an auto sifter, a water bucket, a few redstone torches, some servos. Again, really easy to make. Uh, there's no reason you can't get these early game. It's a bit of glass, bit of iron, bit of redstone. Not a problem. You'll have all, you should have already farmed this by the time you get to this point. You're going to need some item duct. Again, really easy, but make sure when you get in the item duct, you go for the opaque stuff. So the opaque stuff is the one that has brackets opaque around it. Standard item duct is incredibly difficult to make because you need hardened glass. But regular item duct is just tin and lead. So this stuff's really easy to make. You can make it in abundance in early game. Uh, you're going to need some sort of chest. The crystal chest is what I've got here because it's the best to show. But um, wooden chests work absolutely fine. You're going to need an auto sifter. I think we've said that one already. I can't remember. Fluid extractor, some sort of mesh, you're going to need an item extractor, a lever, a few magmatic generators and whatever tier cobblestone generator you've got. So the setup is essentially the same as what it was last time, you're going to put your cobblestone generator down here. And what you're going to do with the cobblestone generator is you're going to attach an item extractor from it, which is in embers rekindled. Again, these are quite easy to make but you might need to flatten some lead into some plates using some kind of um, anvil or something like that. Uh, you're then going to put, from the item extractor, you're going to put item pipes all the way across to your crucibles with your heat source underneath them. This is going to feed cobblestone into your crucibles, which will melt that down into lava. You're then going to put the fluid extractors on the sides of the crucibles here with a redstone torch underneath or at the side of them. It doesn't matter where because these need power in order to extract fluid. Then you're going to use your fluid pipes and pump this straight into the back of the magmatic generators. Now, it doesn't matter if you've got one or five, this will work all the same. Uh, this is a step you can skip this next one with the leadstone flux duct. I've got it here just to show a multiple pulverizer setup, but you don't really need it. If you wanted to do this with just a single pulverizer, you could just have one magmatic generator, put the pulverizer next to it, and you don't need the leadstone flux duct. It's as simple as that. But basically, if you just have the leadstone flux duct coming straight out the front of the magmatic generators and into the back of the pulverizers, it's will power them all absolutely fine. So as you can see, they're all 100% powered here, not a problem whatsoever. When you've got the pulverizers down, you're going to have to put some more uh, item pipe and just bring that across and over the top of the pulverizers. This will just feed cobblestone straight into them. Now, this is essentially the same setup we had before, but instead of transfer, transfer pipes, we've used item pipes. Now, one key difference with item pipes is they can get jammed. Uh, and as you can see here, there's like steam coming out the side of them. Now, this isn't because it's jammed. This is just because it's full. So this cobblestone generator is making way too much cobblestone for any of these machines to handle. So it's just showing that by this little steam pipe coming out here, showing that there's a blockage or something's holding it up. But it will continuously feed cobblestone in. If there was a blockage that was an issue, we'd probably have it like on these uh, entrance ports here into the pulverizers where the steam comes out and stuff like that. As you can see here again, the lava extraction is too much for it to handle. So it's just saying there's a bit of a blockage there. That's not a problem. The problem comes when you start getting steam in the middle of these transfer pipes, which shows there's something in the system that shouldn't be in the system. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the bit which is more important. So we'll ignore these uh, item ducts for now. I'll get back to those. So the auto sifter here. This is a very simple thing to set up. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to dig one block down and you're going to want to place down your auto sifter, which looks a little bit like that. Uh, make sure that the water wheel, which is like a little axle end, is, is facing the direction you want. So if I just show you a quick example here, that's the axle end with the axle on it. You're going to want that facing in whichever direction you're going to want to build your water wheels on. Because once you've done that, you're going to place your water wheels on it like this. And they are what cause the rotation in the auto sifter and cause it to auto sift nice and easy. 
So place down your auto sifter, pop down your water wheels, and then fill one side of the ditch just next to the water wheels up with water. That'll cause them to rotate. So it needs to be one block down in order for this to work, and the water needs to be on level with whatever uh, platform you're building on. And just have this go all the way down, and basically the more water wheels you've got, the quicker this will sieve things. Now when it comes to sieving, you can basically have a huge grid here. So this is a central block here. This is where the auto sifter is. It's directly underneath that block there. And you can go 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 3 in all directions. Now I believe you could probably even make that bigger than that. But that's as far as I got. So that is a pretty huge grid. Let's have a look. What is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's 6 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's 6 by 9. So that's 54 grid. That's a grid of 54 there that you can use uh, to, to generate resources. Now from that, you're going to put your diamond mesh or your string mesh or your iron mesh. It really doesn't matter which one and just fill them all up. You'll tell this is working because they'll vibrate. They'll rotate like this. If they don't rotate, um, then well, you've, you've done something wrong or it's a little bit too far. You've made it a little bit too big, basically. Um, so when you hit the boundary of this grid, it'll stop rotating. It won't do anything. That's the same setup we had before. Uh, basically what you're going to do there is you're going to put the item vacuum down on the same level as that and pop the lever on the side and just turn it on. And then you're going to have the pipe, the item pipe. You don't need the item extractor in this case, just a standard item pipe will do. Feed out the bottom of that, make a little line along there and have that feed into whatever chests you need. And that'll just feed all the resources you're generating from this into these chests. Really, really powerful early game resource generator. Now the complicated part comes here where we start to deal with pulling stuff out of the pulverizer. Now, it's not complicated at all. That may have been an overstatement. So basically, grab your item duct, your opaque item duct, and just place them on the bottom of all your pulverizers. Go into your pulverizers, go into your item configuration, and make sure this bottom one is red, which is the same color as your extraction port there. That'll mean that the gravel gets pulled out uh, of the bottom side of the pulverizer, which is where we've got the item duct set up. What you're going to want to do then is you're going to want to take your servos, which again, really easy to make, and you're just going to want to put place one on each one of the exit ports of the item duct. Once you've done that, right click on the servo, go into redstone control and set it to ignore. This means that it's always powered up no matter what. So you don't need a redstone signal to have this powered and that will start extracting gravel out. Now it's not as quick as the transfer pipes and it does have a travel time. So when gravel comes out, it will need to travel down along these pipes and into the actual grid itself. Uh, which is where this item duct connects straight to. So if you want to basically grab the item duct, drag it all the way down and have it go directly into the auto sifter, as you can see there, you don't need any sort of input or anything on it. It just goes straight into the side and that'll start feeding the gravel in. Like I said, though, gravel will extract from here eventually, but it has a travel time. So if you don't see it going straight away, just give it a minute or two. It'll go in. And if it doesn't go in, you've messed something up. The easiest way to see if something's wrong is these servos will basically become red solid blocks. Uh, just destroy all your item duct, replace it, start again. It's as easy as that. Anyway, that is the workaround for the lack of transfer nodes in Project Ozone 3 and whichever mod pack you want to play in. Simple as that. Now listen, I'm going to do a little bit of self-plugging here. So if you want to catch me live, I do play Minecraft on Twitch, which there will be a link in the description below. It's just twitch.tv forward slash games all one word um, and listen i will do these kind of things on twitch so feel free come watch me follow me on twitch uh follow me on twitter all the other crap that you have to do like subscribe you know the drills you've seen it all before but listen thanks for watching guys i hope this video clears some stuff up and i will see you all in the next tutorial thank you very much